For those of you that can see this video or hear this audio, I just wanted to, to make you aware of what's going on. I feel if I disseminate this information, I may actually get a night's sleep. I am showing my face and I will reveal my name for my own protection. So if something were to happen to me, you know it was not an accident. My name is Robert Connors and I have served with the Department of Defense for over 20 years. Prior to that, I served active duty campaigns in both Iran and Vietnam. I have served my country with honor and distinction. My record speaks for itself. As an ex-DOD operative, it was my duty to protect the Constitution and mitigate foreign and domestic threats in this country. I joined the department to create a a safer world for my children and now grandchildren. Unfortunately, the last decade of my career, I have seen and been a part of one of the biggest threats to this great nation and its citizens. In March of 1994, I was brought in as Director of Communications for a project called Operation Sedgwick, formed under President Ronald Wilson Reagan in 1989, this program was the second stage in the project called MK Ultra. Its focus and sole purpose was the control of the African American population and urban youth through music. Yes, you heard me correctly, through music. I have in my possession a series of video and audio recordings detailing the existence of this project. My division was ordered to destroy all documentation and archive footage. I, in good conscience, could not. This is the information that the American public, along with the families involved, were told bold-faced lies about. From the first-degree murder of the same Parish Crooks, also known as Tupac Shakur, to the evidence of influence of entities well beyond this federal government, beyond this world, will be revealed in these tapes. To my friends still at the department, please, I repeat, please join me. For the Bible says, whoever knows the right thing to do is but fails to do it, for him it is sin. I can no longer live in sin. So, I am giving the Department of Defense until Monday, September 23rd, to do the right thing and disclose this information. If they do not, I will release these tapes to the media outlets and into public domain via YouTube. And to show I'm not bluffing, I will release Michael Jackson's final phone call on the eve of his death. Mr. Jackson's phone was being tapped, and he is speaking of a government conspiracy to murder him. I know this video and this channel will probably be de deleted, so I urge you, please save, download, and re-upload everything that I release for freedom of information's sake. God bless you. Thank you for listening, and God bless you all. What do you mean? Talk to me. I can't talk about it over the phone. I don't know what's going to happen, but I just feel in my soul only God knows they could shoot me, they could stab me, they could frame me and say I will reduce the own drugs. Thank you.
Who, who could do these things? Just have to come back. This boy didn't come back. But I don't know how to die. I don't care. They didn't kill me. I don't even care my life anymore. I just want my children. Where, 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 where were you, Lutai, when you heard the, uh, the sad news? Well, I was actually, my father called me. I was at home, mm. and I had just hung up the phone with, with um, my business partner, and he had just told me about Farah, and I said, oh my, geez, mm. I wonder who's next, yeah. because it always happens in threes. People controlled him. They controlled him. They did what they wanted. And it was very difficult for him to say no, no, no. You must have seen this happening. Was there anything that you could do or say to Michael to change that situation? It's very, very difficult because in situations such as that one, we've tried so many times to uh, intervene. Mm. And it's not always that easy because they keep everybody at bay. They keep everyone away, actually. Mm. Everyone. How did they do that? By controlling. And I, and I know because I have been in a controlling and abusive relationship, but by controlling him, controlling his thoughts, control what he does, not letting any giving orders, not letting anyone through the gates, not letting anyone near security, things of that nature. And this way they have him and they control, control whatever he does. The phones, no phones in the house. Mm -hmm. You suspect foul play. Do you think, Michael, do you think it's murder? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I said it in the beginning and I, I believe it to this day. You must remember Michael told me repeatedly that they were going to kill him, that he was going to die. And who did it? Are you going to be attending Dr. Murray's court case? Absolutely. What do you think about him uh, delaying everything? Dragging speed? Please, Latoya, please what kind of sentence should you receive, Latoya? Death penalty. That's what he no, should be. On you guys don't understand something. They murdered my brother, and they know who they are. It's not just Dr. Murray, I promise you that. It's more people involved, and they know exactly who they are, and I'm going to let you guys know exactly what's happening and what's going on. It's well, more than just Dr. Murray that's involved in this. Well, will justice be served? The doctor that you're looking at, the doctor that you see there, was the fall guy. Hmm. That's what he was. He was the fall guy. And so there are people in the background? There are people in the pulling background. Pulling strings? Yes, absolutely. You must remember, Michael told me repeatedly that they were going to kill him, that he was going to die. And he would say that. And when I heard my mother screamed, he's dead. Immediately, I said, who did it? I didn't say what for, what of, what happened, who did it? Because he repeatedly said that. For the past 20 years, my wife, Evie, and I have been the victims of criminal activities perpetrated by a small network of individuals who are out to destroy us personally, professionally, and financially. This network of individuals is manipulating the banking system and the criminal justice system for the purposes of sabotaging our credit and our credibility. Up until a year ago, Evie and I had never had any run-in with the law whatsoever. We are not criminals, nor are we fugitives from justice, nor are we crazy. We are simply artists and filmmakers who are being racketeered on. 
We believe there are to be a malignant tumor of star whackers in Hollywood. How many people do you know personally who have died suddenly and mysteriously in the past five years? I have personally known eight actors, all of whom all of whom I have worked with and was close to. Heath Ledger, Chris Penn, David Carradine among them. I believe these actors were whacked, and I believe that many others, such as Britney Spears, Lindsay Lohan, and Mel Gibson, are being played to get at their money. In the meantime, many of celebrity's image and marketability is being co-opted co -opted and destroyed. Google helps out by keeping the negative stories near the top of a celebrity's web page because it's the negativity that brings in the advertising revenue. In my own case, my ex-attorney Lloyd Braun has joined this tribe of bottom feeders by creating his own celebrity gossip website. What is wrong with that picture? When your own attorney starts defaming you, who do you turn to to defend you? Lloyd Braun also claims to have come up with the idea of The Sopranos, so he's obviously familiar with the ways and means of organized crime. Unfortunately, my brother Dennis has made matters worse by buying a house from Mr. Braun on property Braun originally bought with money he embezzled from me. I recently discovered, much to my surprise, that Dennis is also on the deed to my Santa Barbara property. This is also the work of Mr. Braun, further confounding the, valid the validity of the transfer of my fully furnished property in 1992 to Mr. Bruce Berman. I have earned approximately $40 million throughout my career. I have profit participation in some of my films. I am being embezzled from by this monstrous ring of accountants, estate planners, and lawyers who are mercilessly slandering me and trying to kill my career and I believe murder me in order to gain control of my royalties. I wish to return to only one thing, work. So does your client plan on attending the hearing next week in Santa Barbara? My client is uh, intending to comply with the law in both jurisdictions and we are going to spend the next couple of days strategizing how to best achieve that. Will that not compromise the refugee? It may. We, are, we have a number of options available to us now, some of which existed before he made a refugee claim and some which arose yesterday. So we're going to take a look at the best options and it may be that we do abandon the refugee claim. So in, in favor of what, citizenship application and sponsorship? There are numerous options, work permits, permanent resident status, there are all sorts of options. This is what we need to discuss in Liberty. And do you, do you understand how paranoid and delusional your client sounds? I'm not going to comment.